Building an efficient workflow is essential for an art form as time consuming as animation. If we don't approach things in the right way, we can quickly waste large quantities of time. This can be acceptable when learning or working on personal projects, but it's certainly not something we'd want to do when employed at a studio or working on freelance projects. In this lesson, I'll provide a general overview of the workflow that I use when animating. And then in the following lessons, I'll walk you through exactly how I animate a project from start to finish, taking this little toadstool character and bring it to life. Hello, I'm John Knowles, and this lesson is part of my Intermotion course, which teaches the foundations of character animation within Blender. The entire course will be available for free on YouTube. And if you'd like to make use of the demo files and rigs as you follow along, they're also available for free using the link in the description. There are a number of elements which we can consider when we're talking about animation workflow. There are the specific tools which we use, or the choice between straight ahead, pose to pose, or layered workflows. But what I'd like to discuss here are the different stages of production, which for animation can be summarized as planning, layout, blocking, spline, and polish. The workflow that I'm covering here is the same one that I've used at multiple studios over many years designed for working efficiently within teams, but it still offers a lot of benefits when working on a personal project. The first thing that we always start out with is planning. When working on a larger production, you'll typically be allocated a number of shots based upon an existing storyboard or animatic. The storyboard will dictate the action required within the shot, its duration and framing, and then the director will also give you an indication of the performance that they're looking for. Despite having all of this information, there's still a lot for you to do as an animator to work out the specifics of the performance. This is where planning comes in. You might record video reference, create thumbnail drawings of possible pose choices, or simply spend time thinking through the various options available to you. If it's a personal project, you're also taking on the role of the director, so there's even more planning work to be done. The layout stage is when we recreate our storyboards within a 3D environment. Within a studio, this is often handled by a dedicated department, and animators are provided with a scene containing the environment, characters, and a predefined camera. Again, with personal projects, this work falls on your shoulders. This is where you need to think about how the camera placement and the focal length choice can best support the performance and the story that you're trying to tell. Blocking is where we really start to get into the process of animating. This is where we set out our key poses, extremes and breakdowns to define our performance. At this point, it's best to work with stepped keys or curves set to constant. By doing this, we're able to focus on the poses we're creating without the distraction of computer-generated in-betweens. This is also crucial when showing our work to a director or supervisor. By blocking all of our shots in this way, we don't get bogged down in the details and we can rapidly create a first part of our work for feedback. By keeping everything stepped, the choices we've made are very clear to the director, and it's easy to adjust our animation based upon feedback. Once we're happy with our blocking, and it's been approved if we're working within a studio, we can then start to add in the in-betweens. This is a process commonly referred to as splining, since it's now that you convert your stepped curves to smooth splines with bezier handles. This stage always reveals problems which need to be fixed, and there's a lot of refinement which can be done but we're moving closer to a finished shot. Once the splining stage is approved, we know that the shot is working and we can start to polish it. This is when we really start to obsess over the details to elevate the quality of our work. This might involve fine tuning arcs or tweaking spacing to ensure that every element of the shot is working as well as it can. Adopting this workflow may seem unnecessary when working on personal projects, but its main benefit is flexibility. By creating a blocking pass first, you can rapidly see if things are working as intended and make adjustments with minimal additional work. During the following lessons, you'll be able to see exactly how I put this workflow into action and learn how to start bringing your own characters to life. <laughs>